welcome to my super, super, super rough draft of a last, of a last lecture. You know, I've really had fun thinking about my life. And uh, I have a few alternative lectures I could have given. So I wanted to share the titles of those before I give the one I decided to actually give. The first one is called The Upside of Dying. Which to me is really rich territory and I would have loved to give that lecture. Another one is called Waking Up Below the Neck. <laughs> AKA how I came back to life before I died. Another one I would call Reverse Engineering Jesus. But the one I chose to give today is entitled Things I've Loved About Being Alive. It might not be the most deep or the most interesting, but it's the one I really wanted to give, so that's why I chose that one. But the very first thing that came to mind was this moment in my high school yearbook class when I won a belching contest. <laughs> I loved that moment. I loved winning that belching contest and a few others along the way. The other thing I've loved is organizing and making sense of things. Um, whether it's spaces or a pile of stuff or people or life in general, myself, I I love getting to the bottom of it. I love zooming out and having an understanding of how everything fits together. Um, I love containers for that reason. I mean, my husband mocks me to no end. When I find a cool container, I stand there until I think of something I can use it for. I've loved the experience of smacking a tennis ball. Like, with the perfect stroke, the perfect technique, as hard as I can, with a whole bunch of spin, exactly on the spot across the net where I wanted to hit it. Like there is just no buzz like that on this planet for me. And it's kind of funny because I was remembering how many coaches have said to me, you would rather look good than win. <laughs> and now that I'm dying, I will admit it's true. It's totally true. I've loved the experience of playing the piano. From the moment that I started to teach myself when I was 10 till this moment, it's been a complete experience of ease and effortlessness and peace and relaxation. And it's just, it's been one of those touchstones for me of of that space that we point to and talk about. And it's been a, hey, this is what's possible everywhere kind of thing for me. And I just love what comes through. I love what comes through. Maybe someday I'll write my own music. I've loved flying. I mean, I realized how many times I've sought it out, like how many times I've flown in little airplanes and asked to fly it a little bit, um, flown in gyroplanes, paragliding lessons, um, that soaring over California ride at Disneyland or California Adventure. I mean, anytime I have that feeling of, of flying, of being weightless, it just feels like home to me. And I love, I love that feeling. And I love the way that, it, that you just, that it, it zooms you out. And it's, it's like a, an instant gift of perspective and, and a feeling of coming home for me. I've loved the experience of water and actually more lakes than oceans. I think I could tell you the name of every lake I've ever sat on the edge of. 
And there's something for me in my experience of that that's another touchstone of that space. One of the biggest memories that came back to me was um, that I did a study abroad program in Jerusalem performance in college. And we spent two, three weeks on the shore of the Sea of Galilee living in these little kibbutzes. And I, every night I would go by myself down to the shore of the, of the Sea of Galilee, which is a lake, by the way. And I put my feet up on this rock right on the shore. And for no reason at all, I fell into the deepest peace I can ever remember feeling up until that point. And I fell into it every day over and over and over and again. And you know, it wasn't because Jesus walked on that water. <laughs> it wasn't because I was doing anything, not doing anything. It was, it was just my moment of waking up, even though I didn't realize it, to, to, to me. That was the feeling of me. Oh, that's a gorgeous memory for me. I have loved the experience of being married to Steve. Despite the fact that I wrote in my journal, I would never marry him. <laughs> I, I don't know how to put this one into words, but you know, uh, Michael's metaphor of the diamond? For whatever reason, despite the endless hours and years that I couldn't see it in myself. He always did. And he always has, other than a few fluky seconds here and there. He, um, and it's been this experience of like a, an IV drip of home. Just being in life with him. Another thing I've loved about being alive is the experience of having a newborn. Notice I skipped over the experience of giving birth. <laughs> For me, there was, there was something about that space of time and that presence where like that, that line between the physical and spiritual, which is made up got really, really thin. And uh, gosh, it just felt like a warm bath for weeks and weeks. If I could have a newborn forever, I think I would. And you know, the experience of being a mom has not been like that a whole bunch of the time, but I've also loved waking up to the possibility of Being a mom without all the thinking. Of just being in the presence of my kids and just enjoying, enjoying their company. And as I've chilled out and relaxed into that, ah, oh, I've loved it. It's been awesome. But it's not really about the word mom, I feel like. I have loved the people, the few, I guess maybe it's a large handful of people who have come into my life one by one, either through what they've written or spoken or their presence, um, that have shown me a glimpse beyond my reality. Gosh, I'm grateful for those people. I've loved that. I've loved that experience of encountering them and engaging with them. I remember many, many years ago, I got my natal chart read. And one of the things she said to me, she said, you have a gift for helping others out of confinement. I mean, as if they were in prison somehow. And God, I love that. I am, um, I do love that. I love being a witness to that. And I love experiencing it. I love walking through walls that aren't there. 
And if there's anything I'd want to do with whatever time I have left, it's that. It's totally that. Okay, and my last thing, which I have no idea how to express, but I'm going to try. has been the absolutely gorgeous experience of waking up to God and waking up to myself, to who I really am. You know, it's funny. There were many, many years through my teens and my, my 20s and then my 30s that I carried this prayer in my heart, which I spoke aloud a billion times informally. This prayer of, help me see you. I want to see who you really are. I want to see the truth. And man, has that prayer been answered. And I think, I think the way I want to try to express it is this. When I was a teenager, I used to, in the middle of the night, um, as an attempt to escape the tornado <laughs> that was in my mind and heart a lot of the time, I would climb up on the roof of my house, or I would sit um, on the front porch wrapped in my, my purple comforter, com comforter from my bed, and I would just stare at the stars and the moon until I sunk back into home. And sometimes it took two hours. Sometimes it took two minutes. But I would, I would sit there until what I understand now, I fell out of my thinking back home. And this image that keeps coming to me these past few weeks is like all those stars in the sky are like, they're like pinholes into a place of, complete and utter light. And the best way I know how to describe what I see now, what this waking up has been like, is to see that despite thousands of moments in my past, and in the past, when it felt like I was in the dark and I had these little shafts of light or these little specks of light to help me, to try to help me survive it. Now, all I can see is that I've never been in the dark. There is no dark. And all that I've ever been experiencing at heart is being completely immersed in the light and being made of it. <laughs> and if there's anything I could give to my kids, to my husband, to my parents, to my siblings who have suffered so much and to everyone on the planet. It's that. It's a glimpse of that. That there is literally nothing to fear, to work out, to make happen fix. Yeah, that's it. That's the best I can do for today to <laughs> expressing it. You know, I was thinking about all the people I'd want to give a last lecture to. And at first, the eight of you weren't really it. <laughs> you were kind of on the bottom, on the bottom of my list. But I've actually totally loved being a part of this group. I think of, of any of the things I've been a part of with Michael, 
This one has um, spoken to the heart of, of what I really want and um, what's really in my way. And I just keep having these little experiences with all of you. It's just been gorgeous. And they've meant so much to me. And there's a lot less in my way than there was eight months ago. And uh, beyond that, I've just loved being in your company. Absolutely loved it. So enjoy the rest of the day. Don't get enlightened without me. And I hope someday we can all sit in the same room again. And I love you all.